as a group of dietitians. So everyone, uh, Jessiana Seville here from thekidnerdy.com. Um, if you don't know me, I'm a renal dietitian. My group of uh, dietitians, there's six of us, seven of us, can't remember now the number. <laughs> um, we work with highly specialized renal diets to help people kind of find a turning point in getting their, uh, in getting their kidney function up or at least stabilizing where it's at. Um, so I'm really excited this week to talk about PKD, how it's different from CKD, but also how it's the same and a few valuable tidbits for people that have polycystic kidney disease to talk about. So just on a basic piece, and I have to tell you a little bit of a story before I get into this. So when I started practicing in this area of preserving kidney function, um, a, a few years ago, a few ish, a few ish, several years ago, <laughs> um, it uh, PKD and CKD were all the same to me. They were just it was all kidney disease, um, and especially over the last couple of years, that has come to be not true. And I'll tell you what kind of this turning point was is um, when I started reading more of the research and like really digging into the research. I was like, this is so interesting you see in a lot of research studies that they exclude people with PKD to get a really good study. I thought that was really compelling. I was like, why is it so different? And I didn't really know until some of the research came out from the Wimes labs in uh, 2019 that talked about ketogenic diets, intermittent fasting, beta hydroxybutyrate, and PKD. And I realized that the, the driving force, I mean, our group really prides ourselves on getting to root cause and looking at how we can support the system as a whole to preserve kidney function. If you look at root cause at polycystic kidney disease, obviously it's cyst growth. And so if you're going to target a root cause approach of helping preserve kidney function, you got to get down to how do you how do you uh, decrease cyst growth or manage that? And that was really this huge turning point for us. Um, in the last year through our nonprofit and in our practice, we've been you know, piloting and pioneering an approach of a low oxalate ketogenic um, plant-focused diet for polycystic kidney disease. That's a lot of words. People are like, whoa, too many things in a diet. Totally doable, um, uh, not easily doable for for everyone without a little bit of help but totally doable great diet um, and it's been one of the greatest privileges that we have had as dietitians is to develop this and work on this and we really have come to um to really see uh i almost want to say the, the plight of people with pkd that they're given no options which is one reason we're really passionate about giving options and finding a great approach um, so let's talk about that approach. As you know, polycystic kidney disease is a genetic condition. No one chooses to have poly polycystic kidney disease through lifestyle or, you know, whatever. You're not going to develop that disease. It just, it's a genetic condition that people are going to develop cysts. They can be on their kidneys. Uh, we see a lot of people with polycystic kidney disease also get cysts on their liver, um, gallbladder, and uh, that definitely impacts your life in so many ways not just in not just in declining kidney function you might end up on dialysis but if you have li liver cysts or gallbladder cysts can impact your digestion um you know for some women it can make them look like they're they're pregnant because they have kind of this big liver and you know there's a really big psychosocial component to this as well um, in 2019 the wines lab came out with some really compelling research that was showing that ketosis or BHB was able to shrink cysts, that cysts were growing off of glucose, but with a ketogenic therapy in the animal models, this has been studied on animals, mostly feline and rat models, that they were seeing that the shrink, the cysts were shrinking. Um, Dr. Wines gave a really great presentation. I send it to, you know, people that are new to this, they're not familiar with the therapy on, um, uh, that shows the photos, you know, of like, here's the before ketogenic therapy, here's after ketogenic therapy, what people, what these animals' kidneys looked like. So really, really compelling uh, research. And, you know, I reached out to him to ask, you know, about this approach. And we've been able to collaborate with them for the last year and a half on developing it. Um, been a really fascinating journey. On our side, 
what we teach people with polycystic kidney disease to do is first off, we evaluate their digestion because we've learned that if your digestion is not working real right, a ketogenic diet for some people does not feel good. They don't feel good on it. Um, and you can really run into some brick walls with it. So, um, so we have been, uh, so we evaluate that piece first, make sure they're going to tolerate a ketogenic diet. And then our next thing, if we feel like this is going to be a good fit for them, we teach them several different components, right? Uh, ketogenic approach, which means that your body is feeding off of ketones, not glucose. We use a net carbohydrate approach, not a total carbohydrate approach. Um, which gives us a lot of flexibility. We do it very plant forward. We have minimal animal protein. So it's not a typical approach that you're going to see blasted all over the place with like dripping cheese and bacon on cauliflower. You know, there's a whole a lot of things you see with ketogenic diets. This is very plant forward. It's a colorful diet. We include fruits. We include <laughs> lots of vegetables. Um, our patients often have, you know, upwards of, you know, 50 to 100 grams of carbohydrates a day. Um, and that's not net carbohydrates, but you know, it's, you know, they have more than you would typically think for a ketogenic approach and they still get into great ketosis. So that's one part of it is getting this really good plant forward approach, um, high fat, high healthy fat diet. We're using coconut, and avocado and, um, cocoa butter and, um, olive oil, uh, flax, a lot of really good healthy fats in this diet. So the second piece is we look at managing oxalates. Uh, oxalates is an important part of ketogenic therapy because some of the research is showing that these microcrystals can form from oxalates and expand the cysts. So we help people learn how to manage oxalates, you know, making sure that they're not eating a lot of spinach or almonds, a few other foods and teaching them how they use calcium as a tool to bind up those oxalates in their gut. So that's another huge component of this diet. Um, I'm just scanning down here through my notes. One of the things that we think is great for people to do and that can be helpful is to download the app called Oxalate Counts on your phone and you can check on you know, your foods, what is the actual oxalate content. So as a general ballpark area, we aim for around 100 milligrams a day. We're not having people track that and count out oxalates. It literally cannot be done because oxalates are wild anyways. <laughs> but it helps give people a perspective of, you know, if this food has 45 milligrams of oxalates, that's going to be a lot if I only have 100 in a day. So it gives you kind of a perspective. So the Oxalate Counts app is a really nice thing that you can use. Um, uh, okay, so oxalates ketogenic approach, and then plant-focused. This is probably the most uh, controversial part of this, I think you could say, if you're looking at different PKD approaches, um, is the protein. Uh, so we do control for protein, whether it's grass-fed or not, we do control for protein. Protein, no matter whether it is grass-fed or not, still has some components that can be tough on the kidneys. So on a general basis of just preserving kidney function, we definitely bring the protein down and are careful about which ones we use. We don't use chicken. We don't use beef in our protocol that we do. We do use some fish, some eggs, and some whole fat dairy. Um, those are not used in excess, but it's definitely something that we use. So those are a couple uh, things that we do. <clears throat> um, in this approach for polycystic kidney disease. We've been working really hard to release recipes. So you can check at the on our blog at kinnardy.com. We do recipes for this approach and for um, low protein diets, uh, just plant-based low protein diets. So you have to search for uh, uh, keto kidney and then you'll find our PKD recipes. We've been working on snacks in particular and you'll see dropped in our stream this week our, um, our ginger pumpkin seeds, which are really good. Diana, who has been uh, really like the expert dietitian who's taken this on. She's amazing, Diane. Um, Diana Cruz is that you'll see that uh, she'll say these, these uh, seeds are addictive. She's like, they're so good. I cannot stop eating them. So we really try and taste test our recipes to give you good ideas on this approach. Now, if you're interested in learning more about a ketogenic approach with this low oxalate and plant forward, 
for PKD, then reach out to us. I love to hop on strategy calls for people. They're free. We talk through if this is a good option for you. If our services are the right fit, if it's not the right fit, I'm really try and get people to someone who has been trained in this. We produced a training for professionals so that we can get more professionals educated on how to use this approach. We 100% realize that this has not been tested in human models, um, but we feel like it is a viable option for people. We really do feel like it's a viable option and we are already seeing results with our patients in uh, their GFRs. Um, so we think that it's, it's a really, really, really a groundbreaking effort to be able to know how to do this. Um, so schedule discovery call with me, a strategy call. I'd love to talk with you more about how we use this approach. Check out our recipes. If you're looking for some ideas, maybe you're already following a ketogenic approach, want to make it more plant forward. Um, we really keep our recipes very, very plant forward. Uh, so they can be used for, with our whole population. Uh, so check out our recipes, give you some new good ideas. The Blackberry Bliss Bombs are a favorite, just as a, as a side tip. Um, and uh, I'd love if you commented below and tell us just a little bit about where you're at in your journey or share this with others. Um, we're really excited about it. And uh, we hope that it will be really, really beneficial for many people with PKD. Anyways, that's all for tonight. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.